Hi there. In this video, we're going to go through creating the logic for a space shooter in Unity 6 using my Spock package. Currently, the scene has no functionality. The stars that you see in the background is actually a particle system, so there is no scripts that are currently running in this game. And I want to create the logic with the nodes that are provided in the Spock package. So let's start with the easiest one, which is the Meteor. So I'm going to select Meteor Prefab and actually go inside here. So we would be adding the logic for the Meteor itself. And for this Prefab, let's add a script machine. Let's create a new graph and I have a script folder that I'm going to put all of the scripts. Let's call it Meteor Graph. Click Save. And let's start creating. So for the meteor, what we want to do is actually move it down. And also we can rotate it to make it seem like it's floating in space. So if you want to actually see it happen in real time, we can actually click play and start editing the script. So let's start with rotating. That way the object is not gonna move out of our scene. So let's look for the node rotate. And for this one, it's pretty simple. I mean, we can just select the speed that we want it to rotate and just like that, 2020. That should get it to rotate in the differing angles. And that pretty much it with making that object rotating. Again, you can use some animation to rotate it as well, but uh, just a simple rotate will do the same thing. Now let's get this object moving downwards. And for that, let's use the move node. And by default, it has the speed set to one in the X direction. So we actually want to move it in the Z direction and in the negative. Choose whatever speed we want it to move. And that is pretty much it. So that's a meteor. And also, if we don't destroy the meteor, it's going to move off the scene and it's going to stay in our game. And we don't really want to do that. So what we can do is on start, do a game object destroy and have a timer for it. So I think 20 seconds is probably going to be plenty for it to move across our scene. And for the object that we're passing in is going to be this. And let's test it out. So as soon as we start the game, the meteor should go down and in 20 seconds, it should get destroyed. So there it is, it's gone. 20 seconds is a little bit too much, so we can actually decrease it and work out the time that we want it to be destroyed in. So 10 will be probably closer for the distance that the meteor needs to travel. Okay, so we got the logic for the meteor. Now let's create the next step is to spawn these meteors in our scene. And for that, I've created an empty game object and called it meteor spawner. So here also we want to create a script machine new, and we'll just go to our scripts folder and call it meteor spawner graph. Click save. So here as well, we're not going to use start and update and instead we're just going to use spawner. So the spawner takes in an asset that we want to spawn, which is going to be the meteor. So let's look for the meteor object in our assets. And there it is. That's the prefab that we've configured. So now if we go to the scene view, look at the top view. The position of our spawner is right here. So that should be right off the camera view where we can't see it. That way we can spawn the objects off our view. So that is the setup. And actually we can click play and configure the speed of our spawning and the distance. So right there you can see that it's currently spawning in a straight line. And for us to spawn across our whole window, we can set the minimum and the maximum distance in the X direction. So let's do negative 10 and 10. And we can see them starting spawning all over that span. 
but also we can set what rate to spawn in and also you have a range of uh, rate so currently it's from half a second to one second if you want to have a constant rate you can do 0.1.1 and that's going to increase that constant rate of spawning so this is the range of spawning and you can see that we can actually increase the range a little bit if we want to get more of those objects spawned on the edges so that the spaceship won't be able to avoid the meteor just by staying on the side so I think negative 13, 13 seems good. And then I guess spawn rate, we can adjust that as well based on how difficult we want the game to be. So that's pretty much the logic for spawning the meteors. And next, let's get our spaceship moving. Um, let's go to our player. And here we're gonna add a script machine as well. And let's create a new graph go to script player graph save and this time i didn't go inside the prefab to add the script machine so that's why you can see the plus icons right there so if you want to apply that to our prefab we can click apply all and then also adds the box collider and rigid body that i've created now quick mention about the setup that i have for the player for the box collider, I just created a rough representation of the spaceship. You can add more box collider to improve the affected areas. And for rigid body, I turned off gravity and turned on constraints for freezing rotation on all axes and also freeze position on the Y axis. So the controls for the spaceship that we want is actually to move it forward, backward and side to side. For the player, we can also go in play mode and start adding our logic here. But um, right now we're gonna get hit by those meteors and it's gonna throw us off the screen. So let's pause the game and add our vertical control. And we're looking for move vertical preset. And we can specify the speed that we want the player to move at. I think 10 is a good speed. So now we can move our player forward but still since we don't have any logic for those meteors they're still pushing us if we stop moving now it just collided with one of those objects and it's moving horizontally so let's go and also add move horizontal preset and also let's use 10 for horizontal and now we'll be able to move our player horizontally and vertically. Now right now the player just can go off screen and you won't be able to see it so it'd be nice to have some limitations for where the player can move to. For that we can use a position limit node also provided in Spock and in here you can specify your limits. So for instance if we want our maximum to be 11 for our Y and a minimum let's set it to two so now if even the meteors hit our spaceship it's not going to go past this point this is the lowest point and the highest point is at 11 which is right here so you can adjust those values how you see fit and we can do the same thing for our side to side and we're currently spawning those meteor at negative 13 and 13 so we can use those same exact values for the movement of our character so now that's the box where our player can play in so that is the movement for the player and we can actually box this together and now we can also add the logic of shooting these lasers in the player script as well so there are different approaches they can do in how to spawn if you want to add the player to control each time he shoots a laser what you can do is use the on keyboard input and let's use space as that and then we can connect to a spawn node and in the spawn node we can find that laser prefab that we currently have so that's our laser prefab and since all laser doesn't have any logic right now 
if we spawn it's just gonna spawn right underneath us and just gonna stay in that spot but uh, one other thing you can spawn a whole bunch of them without a limit so if you do want to use a limit you can use the cooldown option you can go spawn and here you can set what's the fastest rate you can spawn those uh, lasers so you can see that it really limits the ability for me to spawn although I, I'm hitting the space button a whole bunch of times but it only allows it to go through every 0.5 seconds if you want the player to have ability of holding the space down and shooting non-stop uh, the only thing you have to change is from down to listen on hold and that will work if you want the player to shoot automatically what you can do is connect the on update event to the shooting and the cooldown is going to limit the speed that it's going to be spawning at so that is one way of configuring all the different approaches that you have here so all the options are there it just depends what you're looking for but i think just using the spawn and these variations is a significant amount of control that you have here. So currently we're colliding with these meteors and nothing happens, they just move us down. So if we want to listen for the collisions, we can use the if collide note and here we can specify which tag we're listening for. And I use enemy as the tag for the meteors. So we can specify enemy tag and then on enter we can do game object destroy and just destroy the object that collides with us. So now whenever something collides with us, that object gets destroyed. Okay, um, so another thing that I have is a, an explosion effect and let's actually add that here as well. So let's do spawn and I'll look for explosion. right there and now after we have destroyed that object we can do an explosion like showing that our spaceship got damaged okay now let's go and fix this thing with the lasers we have a whole bunch of lasers in our scene and it's about time for us to do something with the lasers so let's go inside our prefab and add a script machine here new graph script it's going to be a laser graph, save. And again, on start, I want to destroy this game object in a certain amount of time. So let's do game object destroy, specify, I think five seconds is good enough for a laser. And now let's pass this as the game object that we're destroying. Also, we want to move this laser forward. So let's add a move note and Again, we're moving forward. Let's start with 20 speed, and we can increase that speed if we'll need. Also, let's go ahead and add uh, a if collide here. And we're gonna listen for enemy as well. And here, we're gonna do the same thing. So once we collide with a enemy, which is gonna be the meteor, we want to destroy the meteor right away and afterwards let's spawn an explosion and after we spawn explosion we want to remove the laser and we're passing this for what we're trying to destroy so that is the logic for the laser and let's click play and there we go now we have we can hold our button and our lasers is shooting and whenever the laser hits one of the meteors it destroys them so that is basically a beginning of this game now in the next part i want to actually include the score so have a score for each time we destroy a meteor and also show how we can have health on the spaceship and even if we want to add health on the meteor itself if anyone has questions about the setup please write that in the comments and 
I'll try to address those questions in the next part. But we were able to create the logic of this game using the Spock nodes. And you can see that it's pretty simple to do if you have these units available for you to use. And I'll leave a link uh, to the Spock package in description. Check it out. And I'll see you guys in the next part.